Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, nah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. Yeah! Yee Here we are. It's Tuesday, folks. Good to be back. What's shaking, fat man? Oh, not too much. Just sitting here at my new desk, looking out the window. It's uh, getting dark, too dark to see. Feels like I'm knocking on heaven's door. How are you? Your hair looks a little disheveled. Did you no shower, workout, just had rough sex? What's going on? Uh, no shower, rough sex yesterday, and I guess I just let it go. I'm letting it flop. I mean, I slept till 1220 today, which is so unlike me. 1220? I just, I just couldn't get up. I, it's one of the things where you blink and you wake up at, I, I slept for 11 hours. I usually sleep for five. Wow. Yeah. I was, uh, tossing and turning this morning and I've had some kooky dreams. Do you remember your dreams or, or no? What's your dream situation? I, I get a glimpse, I, you know, I'm in the morning peeing with a shriveled acorn, and I'm going, like, oh, yeah, I dreamed I made love to my uh, dad's mom, and then uh, then it kind of goes away. Yeah, I get a lot of that. Sometimes I have bits come, and I'm like, I got to remember this for sure, and then you, you don't want to get up and turn a light on, so you're like, ah, I think I'll remember it, and then you just remember the remembering that you have a bit. Yeah, ex- oh, isn't that fucking frustrating? It's the worst, but I I had a dream the other day, and I've got some family drama going on, so I think it probably was manifesting, but I had a dream that my family was all in a building, and then there was like a school across the way, and my uncle Brian was like, I'm going to moon them, I'll moon them, and he did like a a pressed ham ass on the window, and there was like a little girl, it was like Schindler's List, it was like a girl in a pink jacket pointing, and she was like, you know, Nazi or whatever, Yeah, and I was the only one serious, and this deep family stuff here i was like dude that, that's like a sex crime we gotta get out of here she could probably see your ball bag and my oh. whole family was like shut up joe you're such a baby you panic and i was like seriously we gotta go and then like the police showed up we were looking at a building across the way Whoa. and it was like cops with the weird football hats like a that helmet that's shaped like a football you know in england oh yeah yeah look like a little penis yeah, I know about a little penis, but wow, that's crazy, and that's one of those, you can't Google that, you know, I got wooden teeth, uh, I'm, I'm eating a jack-o'-lantern on a Friday, you can Google all that shit, but that's a wacky one. Well, then we got in the car, we drove away, and we were like speeding away, and then all of a sudden my dad appeared in the back seat, and I was like, what are you doing here, and he's like, I've never loved you, and, and it was like a police chase, and I, I woke up, and it was scary, but, uh, and then I went back to bed and f- fucked one of the kids. Oh, all right, all right. Well, that's uh, at least there's a happy ending, but that is definitely family drama just coming at you, and then the police, and you're nervous about stuff, and maybe some social media, and some politics, and defund my asshole. It's all coming at you. Yeah, it was a uh, kooky duke dream, and then this morning, I, you know, I had all kinds of stress because we, we got some drama going on, and then I, from like five to six, I was tossing and turning and staring at the ceiling and, and, and counting goats. Isn't that weird that some people have drama going on and they love it, they live for it, that fuels them, their blood is pumping, their heart's racing, and then other people like us, we got drama and we undo an umbrella, we're just sinking down in our chair, please leave me alone, I hate it. It's weird how some brains trigger a fun time and some brains trigger sadness. Yeah, I think we're more joke guys and some people like drama more than uh, silliness, I guess, but I'm like that in relationships because... You know, if my wife and I bicker, I'm like, let's just get divorced. This isn't working. Same. This is silly. Like, I, I, some people, I got family members, friends that just love to go at it like fucking Earl Weaver. Just they turn their hat around and kick dirt on their wife. And yeah. uh, I'm just like, nah, whatever you think. We'll just, you want Chinese, we'll get Chinese. I hate myself. I'm the same way. I mean, I, I, I guess my family was so shut down and closed off that if we fought, it was like, oh, all right. I guess he's going to kill me or I don't know. My dad was such an angry kook when I was little that I just cower when I hear anybody getting mad or angry. I can't take it. Yeah. I, I'm just like, uh, uh, never mind. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Like to me, a fist fight on the street, if I was about to fight a guy, once we're actually 
coming to blows, that's fine. But the beginning part, I'm like, Aah! you know, the fight. Hey, what do you got a problem? You want to go? All that. I'm like, wait, no. Uh. But if we're actually fighting, I'm fine. Yeah. Isn't that see, weird? It should be uh, the other way around. Yeah, I guess so. I, I just, uh, I don't like it. I don't want anyone to be upset with me because I'm gay. And, um, you know, so that's why I uh, jerk off into my own mouth so everyone likes me. Yeah, yeah, that's why how we met. But, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whatever it takes. Uh, it's been a wacky week, and it's MLK Day. So, hey, let's all come together, huh? Yes. I think that was the Beatles, actually, not ah. MLK. By the way, coming together is what I did at a sleepover in uh, the 80s. <laughs> you know, me and six guys, you get each get a, a, a corner of the room and jerk off into a Ghostbuster sleeping bag. Yeah, I remember a kid, and uh, he was had his shorts at his knees beaten off. But I remember being like, I don't think we're supposed to be doing this with each other. And he oh, was like, really? no, you got to do this. This is what you do. You beat off. And I was like, no, I understand. I, I beat off. I just don't do it with my, my fucking mates, you know? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, well, you know, it brings you closer, I guess. Not me. It distanced me. That, to me, is like, <laughs> that's like the ultimate argument, is somebody jerking off in front of you. I'm like, ah, I'm out. Well, let me call Louie. Hold on. He just but, left my house. Oh, jeez. Well, no wonder you hate it. <laughs> that's, I guess why I'm thinking about it. How bizarre is that? He was in my home just a second ago. Isn't that I can't strange? imagine him ever in Queens. That's so it, funny. Very bizarre. He was looking at furniture in LIC, and he said, hey, I'm in the neighborhood, and uh, it's weird to have... Yeah, I don't get a lot of poppins over here. I'm in Queens, maybe a Veter, but even then, it's more of a... We go for a walk, but... right. Uh, yeah, it was like, a, I'm going to come by, and it throws you into like a fit. I got to put pants on. I got to yep. swallow my cum. I got to change the movie. You put on a different movie so it looks like you're cool. <laughs> I'm right, like, let me right. throw on Apocalypse Now, because I was watching The Best of Betty White or whatever. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> 99. And it's also strange, because when you have company, but you have, you have the out, but you're in your home, is weird. Yes, yes, totally. Like, when, yeah, someone coming to your home, it's it's, it's uh, jarring. You're like, Ugh, what do I do? And you can't really sit down. You just keep standing while they sit. It's all off. It's strange. And then you're giving the tour. And as you're opening the bedroom door, you're like, is my dildo on the pillow? Right. Is our, do her panties have crust in them? Like, yep. it's, it's so nerve wracking showing the bedroom on a tour. Yep. And also, like, so we're podcasting at five and it like, you know him. He's 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 a, a chatter, and it's like four fifty three, and he's like, "Let me let me show you this one other movie." And I'm like, I, "I gotta start the podcast. I can't. It's not. We have to. I have other people waiting for me." Yes, yes. Well, damn, he was there there that close to the to the time. He's fucking Sarah in the other room right now. Yeah, well, I can hear her crying. Right. <laughs> But no, it was great. I mean, it's, first of all, it's like these days, COVID, any kind of hang is is exciting. Yes. You know, you get someone there and you get someone, you're sitting on the couch, the three of us are having coffee and tea. And then the other day I bumped into Veter. It was his last day in Astoria, Gary Veter, our good pal. And yeah. um, he was like moving out and his wife and, and son had already moved. I bumped into him on the street. He like take, gave me the tour of his house. It's all boxed up. And we sat there and had a good cry and uh, I blew him. Hey, all right. Uh, well, that's great news. Uh, l let me let me throw this in your uh, dick hole and see if it in gets infected. Uh, so everybody's moving to Jersey. You know, Gomez is in Jersey. Big J's going to Jersey. Veter's going to Jersey. Other people going to Long Island, upstate, whatever it is. Some people are going to Florida, Texas. I came across a real estate option. Oh boy! But it's in Brooklyn. Oh God. Now, my whole comedy career, I started in Brooklyn, got mugged, uh, Bushwick, Bedbugs, bed Crown Heights, and I finally made it to Manhattan. It was the highlight of my life, living in Manhattan, in the island, on the, in the city, sex in the city. And then, now I got this Brooklyn option, and we were, me and the lady were pretty gung-ho about it, pretty official, it's happening, and then... We heard about someone else moving in the building, and now we're completely turned off. Interesting. Del Boca Vista. Exa I can't tell you who, but it's the same exact premise as that episode. Oh, wow. This is exciting. We're going to be all over that shuffleboard court. Exactly. Now they're going to call. Hey, uh, you want to come by? Ah, well, you know, I'm a little busy, but I'm like one floor down. Ah, you see one him in the, the pool, the elevator, the, the sauna, you name it. Shuffleboard court. 
Uh, I should have saved the shuffleboard court for that moment. Ah, that, yeah, that was that would have been good pop there at the end. Uh, I fucked up. No one gets the references anyways. But anyways, wait, for, what are you doing in Brooklyn? I mean, first of all, need I remind you, you have two homes in Manhattan. <laughs> wait, what are you going? You're going third home? Well, I'll remind you there, Tubbs. One of them is being rented by a nice Asian skank, and then this one we're renting, so we would just hightail out of here and then own in Brooklyn. Oh, the own. I see. Okay. Own the libs. But what kind of uh, Brooklyn are we talking? Are we talking Williamsburg, Park Slope, Bushwick, Ozone Park? I think that's Queens. They call it they call it Borum Hill. It's right by the uh, the Barclays. So right by all the choo-choos and uh, a lot of restaurants and shops and gays and all that. And, uh, you know, we did a walk around the other day. Like, could we live here? Does this feel right? Uh, is that your hand? Who's who's touching me? Whatever it was. And uh, that building is so spectacular. I mean, it's brand new amenities. I mean, you got to come by and see this canopy. And there's a meditation room. There's a podcast studio. There's entertainment. There's a lounge. There's a bar. I mean, it's really something. I, I mean, it feels... I'm sure the building's amazing. If I saw the building, I, I'd take a shit and eat it. But... I mean, Brooklyn, we hate Brooklyn. Brooklyn is, first of all, it's like the epicenter of wokeness. It's, yeah, it's yeah. the woke spot. We're going to record in, in Brooklyn? If they find I, out, they'll fucking shoot us like the Kennedys. Trust and, me, that crossed my anal. And uh, also, it's way the fuck out there. I mean, the, the, the thing about where you live is you could be at the Comedy Cellar in eight minutes. That's what Less. everyone's jealous of. Exc- oh, I didn't want to give away your address. Either, oh, but, shit. Uh, I exaggerated on purpose. But yeah, I mean, if Appreciate you want to get it. crazy... You can be at the comedy cellar in forty seconds, yeah. And you know you got a roof over there. I mean, owning is nice, obviously the bullshit, but all that crap. But but just side note, I don't know how it works with owning in New York, but my mother's always been like, if you own, if you rent, you're pissing your money away, yada yep. yada. But as you remember, a couple of weeks ago, a big giant shit exploded in my bathroom, and we called an old man to fix it. So good point. That's something. Good point. I just don't see you in Brooklyn. It's just. I hate Brooklyn. You got to get a fucking skinny pants and a weird hat, no. and and you got everything's gonna be racist now. And I, I don't like the idea of you in Brooklyn. It just doesn't sit well. I hear you. Look, look, man. I thought I had all the same thoughts. We've had all the same talks. The the lady feels the same way as you. She hates Brooklyn. She hates Jews. So we don't know what the hell to do. But the place is so great, and you're looking at Manhattan and. Look, Vitor's going to Jersey. He's in another state, for Christ's sake. I'm going across just a little pond, and I'm still in the, the city of, of New York. I don't know. Everybody has said do it except you, which is interesting. I mean, I haven't seen the building. Obviously, owning is a big investment. That's exciting. That's a whole to-do. I mean, you just got this apartment three weeks I, ago. I, I mean, know. it feels like just weird, addictive behavior. You're just shifting from one place to the other. <laughs> Settle in. Live in this building. You got a great building. You got the step down. You got a roof. Yep. You're looking at fucking... Blank Avenue. I mean, it's you're like I feel like Dylan at your house. I'm sitting on the windowsill writing fucking bullshit. Well, come by. We'll we'll write a uh, you know Tambourine Man. Although I don't think he wrote that one. No, but, he did. Uh, oh, oh, sorry. The birds stole it. Yeah, they stole it and made a jingly jangly horseshit. Yeah, yeah. His words, not mine. <laughs> jingly jangly horseshit. That's a that's a great band name right there. I but, think I added the horseshit, but ah, uh, all right. Well, either way. I've had all the same thoughts and all the same, uh, what is it, convictions, complaints? I don't know. Uh, yeah, so I- I'm with you there, Fatty. And this place, I love this place. It's a great apartment here, even though it doesn't look like much on the Zoom. Trust me, come by. And yeah, you got to come by more. If you like it so much, prove it. Well, I mean, I've, you haven't, you're not on the road. I'm up my ass. I mean, I, I'm not getting a lot of invites. It's not a pop by spot. It's a 45 minutes away. I, I've come by a couple times, I might That's add. True. Um, right. But yeah, I'll come by. But this Brooklyn business, it, it feels a little funky. And Barclays, I guess Borough Hill is going to be, or Boring Hill. What is it? Exciting Hill? <laughs> Borum. Borum. I don't even know them. Yeah, well, here's the thing if those queefs move in. The deal is off. Wow. I, you got to text me who these queefs are. I'm, I I'm will. When I do, you're going to go, P-U, go to the Bronx. Yeah, this sounds awfully fishy, but uh, I don't know. I guess whatever your wife thinks, uh, I, I don't know. It's 
you got that special place there. I feel like you've lived there for four days. Yeah, it's been, I think, since July or June. So it's a quick flip, but I got a hot tip for my, I, you know, I befriended my real estate cunt. And he's he's got all these new tips. Like his building's, you know, 10% finished. Everybody's trying to get in it. I got a spot for you if you want it. I'm sure he gets a kickback. I'm not an idiot, but... <laughs> I know. Of course, he's got you on the hook. He's, he's got, got you on the line. He's reeling you in. I mean, this is insane. I know. It hit his defense, though. He did find this Asian coos to uh, fill the, uh, the old place. So who okay. knows? That's not bad. I don't even know who you are anymore. You got a real estate agent? You just have a real estate agent? This is insane. Well, he, I don't have an agent. He's a friend, and uh, we stay in touch. I see. I got you. Well, but, I don't know. I mean, it sounds like your heart is uh, in Brooklyn now. Well, a tree grows there, and uh, I don't know. Everybody's telling me to do it. My mom says, yeah, do it, but she, she wasn't listening. She thought I was talking about going gay, and uh, my dad's trans. So I don't know what's going on, but I'm, tell- I'm not going to change. I'm too, I'm, I'm, I'm too deep in with this personality i'm sticking with it well i'll just add this and maybe we've talked about this but my friend ronan hirschberg our friend you can yes. check out uh we're doing a movie pod it's on the patreon join the patreon for god's sakes a lot of good fun stuff on there great stuff. and and he has a he lives in brooklyn and he had a lady asking for money inside his building she's like can what? you spare a dollar on his steps jehovah's and witness our friend tom takar he had a person breaking in, and then he got randomly punched in the face, and someone broke in his car twice, all in Brooklyn. What neighborhood? Do you know? I think it was called Borum Hill, something <laughs> like that. No, well, I don't know where they are. It's a large borough. I believe the biggest borough. Uh, you know, you got you got uh, Leffert's Garden, then you got fucking Borum Hill, then you got Park Slope, then you got uh, Clint- Clinton Hill, uh... You know, Lauren Hill, whatever it is, there's a lot of places. It's a lar- It's like saying, oh, this guy lives in the Upper West Side. You're fucked. You go to Manhattan. I guess so. Um, but yeah, there's. I guess it's a different neighborhood. I don't know anything about Borum Hill. I never heard of it. Frankly, it sounds made up. But uh, <laughs> Cypress Hill, I know a lot of hills over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Hillside Strangler. I'm with you, but... Capitol Hill, we stormed that, but I, I don't know. It's uh, it, it threw it out there, and I, I appreciate your opinion. I respect your opinion, and so I uh, put it in your ass and see if it came. Well, I'm sure if I went to this building, it looks crazy. I just found a floaty in my drink. God damn it! Yeah, uh, I hate a I'm floaty. Sh- I'm sure if I went there, it's got a canopy and a door guy and uh, a pool and a gym and uh, whatever. So I'm sure it's great, and I understand owning is a much better thing. I'm just saying. Give it some time. You're like one of these guys that's engaged and breaks it off and is engaged again. I mean, right. you live in that apartment. I remember I just, you called me and you said fucking Warren Spahn lives in this building and, and Don Drysdale's <laughs> my doorman and you got the yeah. rooftop and, and the sunken living room. And that was like, again, like six weeks ago. I'm Kim K over here. I can't commit. I can't stay married. Uh, but I stayed at my old place for a couple of years and that was the size of a, a baby's ball sack. So... I, I do feel like I found a great place here. I got a COVID deal, but I am renting. Right, so rent. this will be owning. And when you see this play, I mean, it's heaven on earth. But maybe that's that's a whole other factor is, is it too comfortable? Am I ever going to leave? I mean, it, I, I have a podcast studio there. I have a, a gym there. I have a, a art room, a sauna, a lounge, a library. I mean, it, it's like the game of Clue in this place. There's every room. I got to study. Is that what? all real? There's a sauna? A library? Yes, you can come by and use my sauna. Oh, I love a sauna. All right, I'm, 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 I'm on board now. I'll go to the sauna. All right, well. Don't get me wrong. I'll, I'll come by either way, but uh, that sounds a lot more out of the way. And I got a, I got a garage as well, Ooh. so you can pop the Sentra right in. Garage is big. I mean, you're starting to sell me on this place. Rooftop? Oh, big roof. I'll send you the, uh, the uh, what do you call that thing? The schematic. I don't know that word. That's like the, the, the blueprint kind of thing. I don't know the term. All right. All right. We better move on to some other business. That really oh. ate up some time. I apologize. I got excited. Sorry. No, I, I think that's fascinating, and I'm glad to hear your thoughts. But uh, what, what do you got there? I'm hogging it. <clears throat> well, uh, I'll just talk about this because I know you got a lot. But uh, last Saturday, so I haven't been doing too much stand-up comedy. I've been uh, making some videos. I'm doing nine podcasts. I'm taking some <laughs> photos and uh, a couple dumps and yeah. just kind of laying low here. It's bad. 400,000 people have died, the whole thing. And um, we're going to pass the Civil War. 600,000 people. Wow. 600 Remember uh, 
Six hundred million people died. A thousand. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Whatever. Seinfeld. Anyways. Um, so I've been laying low, haven't done a set in a while. And I think maybe we talked about this on or off air, but I'm like, so right now, you know, you always feel that pressure to be doing comedy, to be running around writing and getting on stage. And this right now, it feels like, you know, I can kind of lay low and enjoy it guilt free. And it feels like we're never going to come back, hopefully to a time like this where everything's shut down. But we will go back to a time where we're working full time, the whole thing. So I've been taking that as like, I'm going to really lay low, find out who I am, all that bullshit. I'm gay. And so I've been doing that. And then uh, Ryan Reese hits me up and goes, hey, I got a show Saturday night, Midtown, 53rd and 8th. And I go, that sounds good. I'll do it. Then Soder texts me and goes, hey, are you doing this show? We could hang out. It'll be like the old days. And I said, yeah, let's do it. So... Saturday night, I go get the Sentra. Sarah's on the gig. Soder's on the gig. Sarah and I get the Sentra. We pick up Soder. And now I'm driving the bus. We drive into the city. Parking is just a breeze right now. Six o'clock show. I pull up right in front of the venue. And Woo! it's the old days. Remember, we used to be at the World and Broadway, 53rd and 8th, Barcelona yep. Bar, yep. Soup Nazi. We go over there. And it's like the old days. It was wild. There's less people around. We go up there. And the place is Packed. Yes. Packed bar outside. It's one of those gigs where we're pretending to be outside. There's like a canopy. It's right. clearly like inside. <laughs> You're but everyone's Batman. pretending. Yeah. So we go in there and the crowd is like hot. They're laughing at setups. We get wings in the back. We're all sharing wings. It's like Ryan Reese, Sheba Mason, Allie Breen, good group. Chris Murphy. I haven't seen that guy in seven years. I thought he was dead. I, th- I think he is. But <laughs> um, great guy. Hadn't seen him in years. And great then, guy. Uh, Artie Fuqua comes by. Great what? to see him. And uh, he's, you know, he's wearing his best Ted Baker suit. He's got a $4,000 suit on. I'm wearing you know, a hoodie with spaghetti sauce on it. But oh, man, yeah. it, you know, I've done a lot of shows in the summer. We were doing a lot. But this is the first time in a long time anyways that I did a show with Soder, with Sarah, in between sets. We're bouncing bits before and after. We went to Dunkin' Donuts and Starbucks in between. And we're kicking around the old days. We're like, there's Broadway. Remember that night Nate and I shit our pants? We used to get McDonald's here. We looked into Barcelona Bar where we used to black out and the whole thing. Wow. And it was just great. Second show was not as great. The crowd kind of sucked. And it reminded me of like, oh, God, late shows suck. And everyone was chatting. But, man, special, special night. It, It just felt like amazing. And, you know, we all hugged and kissed. And I just felt like. God, this is, it really makes you miss it. When you're home yes. and just kind of living this different life, you're like, ah, oh, this is cool. It's interesting. But man, I, I miss spots. I can't wait for everyone to get vaccines shot in their ass so we can fucking ditch the masks, hang out, and, and have some fun. Here, here. I'm with you, man. I, there's nothing better than that feeling of getting juiced up, jumping in the car, riding into Queens. And I know that gig. That's a hot gig. It's kind of a secret. I don't know how much we're supposed to divulge, but. It's a uh, it's a great spot. I mean, that would be a decent spot without COVID. You know, it's kind of feels indoorsy. It's in Midtown. It's quick. It's easy. Crowd was hot when I did it, and uh, man, it, it, it rejuvenates you. You're back. You're like, I have purpose. I have a life. This is what I'm I'm supposed to be doing. And your friends are with you, and you're hanging out. It's it's all gravy. Yeah, I had that. Well, a couple of days before that, I did Shafi Hossein's show at um, what the fuck that bar? Arrogant Swine. Arrogant Swine. Yeah. So again, like drove over there, and that that time it was just me, and that felt cool because. You know, Sarah wasn't on, Soda wasn't on, but I, I jumped in the car, and the car is such a game changer. I got there in 12 minutes. It's like Ooh. a two-hour fucking train ride because it's Brooklyn. in Brooklyn. Brooklyn. So I drive over there, park right in front. Best parking spot I've ever got. I get out of the car, and you can hear the comedian. Like, he's just on. <laughs> Walk in there, and, and same thing. Like, I'm in the bathroom taking a piss in that dive bathroom with fucking spray paint, fuck the man, whatever on there. And you're like, oh, look at these assholes spray painting the toilet. And it just felt good. That feeling of like taking that last piss before you go on in the bar show. So you just, you got 10 minutes and you're like, I got these three bits. I'm going to try. Yep. And went on and did all new, 100% new. Come on. And it was hitting. It was like killing. It felt great. That's the best. Holy hell. That's rare. All new. Come on. And we're rusty. Well, that was the thing that was interesting is like, I was like, I've been on stage in five weeks, and I think it was like Shafi was like, how'd you feel? And I was like, well, I felt normal because I'm doing all new, 
Anyways, so even if I had been on, I'm like, I'm still doing the jokes for the first time, essentially. So felt good. So uh, I- I'm feeling good. Hopefully there's more of these shows around town, and uh, I'll-, I'll hit them up. So hit me up, folks, for some shows. Yeah. Same here. I I did that Eric and Swine and and loved it. I, I had a, we had a few Tuesdays there when I did it. So that's the cool thing about you know you go out to Williamsburg. You're like, all right, well my uh, my trans jokes are really gonna eat a hot lunch, and then they're laughing because they're Tuesdays. That's a great feeling when you can get an edgy joke off in Brooklyn. Yeah, it's not a place I'd want to live. I'll tell you that. But, <laughs> but um, you know, some of the shows are pretty good. All right, what are you what are you looking at here for? Uh, Tuesday Store is brought to you by Express VPN. You know it, you love it. We've all been in lockdown for almost a year, and I think I've seen everything on Netflix and Pornhub. But with Express VPN, you can trick the computer into thinking you are in a different country and you'll be able to watch just about anything in the world. Wow, that's pretty cool. You already know a VPN will protect your privacy online, but it can also take your TV watching game to the next level, unlock movies and TV that are only available in other countries. It works with any service in over 100 countries, Netflix, Amazon, YouTube, BBC, ah, back to Pornhub, you name it. I love these guys. Big fan of ExpressVPN. I've used VPN before when I went to China and uh, Australia and a couple other places, but there's nothing as good as the Express VPN. You can watch anything you want, and I like weird shows all over, like British TV. So, uh, big fan. They got French Netflix, all kinds of wacky stuff, Canadian stuff that you can't get normally. So, get that VPN and tell them how, JoJo. Yo, use my special link, our special link, right now, expressvpn.com slash Tuesdays, and you can get an extra three months free for free. That's crazy. Support the show. Watch what you want and protect your privacy at expressvpn.com slash Tuesdays. Go do it, folks. You will not regret it. And Tuesdays with Stories is also brought to you by Lucy Nicotine Gum. Yes. You know how much we love nicotine gum, folks. This company was founded by Caltech scientists who were former smokers. That's right. They smoke. They don't anymore. They wanted to create a better and cleaner nicotine alternative to help people quit smoking and vaping. It took them three years of research and experimenting, and we've been there, and they they finally made Lucy a nicotine gum that actually tastes good. It comes in three flavors, wintergreen, yum, cinnamon, delicious, and pomegranate. Interesting. Each serving has four milligrams of nicotine. That's a good amount. It also makes lozenges that are cherry iced flavored. You know how hard it is to quit smoking, folks. I mean, I never uh, was a smoker, but my wife was. She said it's the hardest thing she's ever done besides me. And it took her months, years, all these efforts. My mother smoked. My dad smoked. And uh, I was a kid. And so, you know, that was scary. So if you have kids... Quit smoking, folks. You got to quit. Get yourself some Lucy nicotine gum. And, uh, boy, there's great deals. Tell them all about it, Mark. I suck. Uh Aha. They're uh, supporting this show, so go support them. Get 20% off all products, including gum or lozenges, at lucy.co with code TUESDAYS, plural. That's 20% off lucy.co and use promo code TUESDAYS at checkout. Uh, This product. Contains nicotine derived from tobacco. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. But you already knew that, so get 20% off at lucys.co at Code Tuesdays. I love it. All right. I love nicotine. Nice cigar. Really makes you shit. Yeah, and they say it's actually not bad for you. It's all the tar and the jizz and the AIDS that are in the cigarette there that's really kitting you. But the nicotine's the tobacco. fine. Is that right? Yeah, nicotine's all good in the hood. No kidding. That's where you'll be living. Um, <laughs> if you want to take a shit, I mean, we've talked about this years ago, but I, the, the good old days, I have a big green smoothie, a big old burrito from Chipotle, a hot tea and a cigar. You'll take a shit the size of a fetus. I mean, just massive dump. That's that's the formula if anyone's interested. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I hadn't been to Chipotle in a, about, in about a couple weeks, and I went today, and man, it's a heavy-duty meal. It's a lot of calories. It's heavy i got a big big retarded baby in my belly right now it, 
I can't believe we ate that four times a week. I know, I miss it. Remember the old days on the Upper West Side? We would go there right after oh. on 79th Street and, or 78th Street. Those were the days, yeah. Those were weird uh, days. I mean, the show has been through so many weird things. I mean, like, yeah, the people ups, that we downs. pitched it to were out of the business, I think. <laughs> yeah, isn't that crazy? We've, we've really transitioned many times. and do, New studios, new networks, new producing, old producing, uh, a lot of... A lot of uh, Byron Allen incidents, you name it. Yeah, a lot of running to producers to cut things out. That was oh, fun. yeah. Some good old-fashioned drama. Anywho, what do you got? You said you got a lot, and I feel like we haven't got to any of it because Brooklyn was so kooky. Well, here's something I want to throw against the wall and see if it's diseased. Uh, I've got my hopes up on a thing, and just shoot them down because I, I'm going to get hurt later, and I, 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 I'm too... I'm too hopeful about something. I know it's not going to happen, and I need to just be brought back to Earth, and you're the guy to do it. Sure. You suck. You're going to fail, and you're going to die for sure. Thank you. All true. And so my my agent sends me all these auditions. I don't know how you are, but you know, all I do is sit around going, how come I'm not in Crashing? Why am I not in Girls? Hey, what the hell? I should be in Atlanta. I'm black, whatever. I'll wear the black face. You name it. But... Then they send me all these auditions, and I look at each one and go, ah, this is a bunch of shit. I don't want to do all this work. So I'm, yes. I'm, a, I'm a cunt in that way. I feel the exact same way. I just got sent an audition, and same thing. I had to get an extension because I didn't know how to read it. And I was reading it with my nephew, and then I'm reading it with my mother, and, and she sucks. And not, She doesn't suck as a person, but as an actor. And I, the same thing. I'm like, ah, I'm not going to do it. All I've ever wanted to be was an actor. I like practiced my <laughs> Oscar speech. I don't thank God. And... I get an audition, and I'm like, no way, Jose. Yeah, it's just, they don't realize. I know they're sending us a tape, and they go, this is perfect for you. We vetted all these parts, but this one is so you. It's a nerdy guy with glasses and a forehead and a small mouth, and you're like, I still am not going to get it. And it's so much work. You got to shoot it. You got to memorize the lines. Then you got to shoot it again because you fucked it up. Then you got to edit it. Then you got to send it through. It's a lot of work. Yeah, and I, I also, I'm not an actor, so like... Ronald Reagan, the actor? So, like, I, I'll say my line, and then while the other person's reading their line, I just stand there. Like, I yes. watch the video. I, I know film. I know TV. I don't know TV too well, but I know The Sopranos stinks. But I'm watching it back, and I'm like, because a tiger will bite you. And then she's like, woo! And I'm like, yes! Yeah, I think I, <laughs> like, I just stare. I can't act. I suck. Yeah, I'm with you 100% there, Fatty. So... I do these auditions. They take me six hours to each one. I send it in. I never get it. I've never gotten one thing. At least you've gotten some stuff. I've never gotten one thing. Well, I'm sorry. I got my first audition I ever went on. First and third auditions. But that's the commercials. Those are like, who wants to be in a commercial? Commercials suck. I would love to be in a commercial. It pays way better, and it's one day of work. But You did commercials. You did that Toyota thing. Oh. You did. You just did one recently where you were in the shower doing some commercial thing. Oh, yeah. That was a, a Instagram ad. But hey, you're right. You're right. I'll take yeah. it. The Toyota thing, they came to me, though. That was the beauty of it. The auditioning, I just fucking hate, but to each is anal. So I got the ultimate audition, and I couldn't wait to shoot it because I'm such a fan and blah, blah, blah. Try to guess the show. Curb. You got it. Yeah. Right out of the gate there, lunch. So I call up Fat Sally Cuse. I go, hey, Sally. We got a curb audition. I send it to him. He goes, get your fat ass over here. I hop on the bike. I go over there. And it was it was a dream. Like, there's no script. Larry just tells you the the the, the subject or the premise. And you just act it. And Sal Cuse was Larry. And I was the guy fucking with Larry. And it was wow. so fun. Wow. I actually, obviously, I'm not going to get it. But I, I actually felt good about it. You know, you turn it in usually, and you're like, oh, that's a load of pile of, big pile of steam and dog shit. But this, I'm like, this I could get this. This went pretty well. Salicuse killed it. I felt like I was in the zone. I could, he I could see myself on the show. So when do you hear what goes on? When, did, when was it due? When did they send it? What's, well, what's going on? Are wheels in motion? Well, I sent it on Friday. Then it's a weekend. Then MLK to go get shots. And now we're waiting on this day and all that. So... Uh, who knows? I'm, I'm, look, I'm probably not going to get it, but boy, that was exciting. Well, I would say this. I mean, like, numerically or digitally, what's the thing? Percentage-wise, it's not 
odds. It's not a high percentage odd. Yeah. But you're in there. I mean, first of all, you, it's clear you're funny. I mean, I, I wish, I don't know if Larry sees it, if he casts it, or if there's a casting person, but right. anyone can see that you're funny, that you know what you're doing. I haven't seen the audition, but I'm sure it's pretty good. The fact that you're not like it's dog shit makes right. it seem like it's great. So why not you? I mean, we've seen a million comics in there. I mean, who's better than you? Why not you? Ah, everybody's better. I suck. I hate myself, but... I don't know. Here's the here's the rub. Here's the clinker. We shot it and we had to cut because we kept laughing, which I think is a good sign. But I'm supposed to be a pretentious L.A. actor guy who's all about vibes and energy and aura. And the lines are funny, but I don't come off that L.A. douchey because my acting is not great. But the lines are funny. So that might be what kills me. The rhymes are crossed. Well, sometimes, though, <laughs> it doesn't matter because they've changed the character for an audition is so good. There's a million stories like, you know, uh, Tommy DeVito, the real Tommy DeVito in Goodfellas was 6'9", and uh. he's 24 years old and 800 pounds. John Cazale in Dog Day Afternoon, the real character was 21, but they were like, we got John Cazale, just make him an old, bald fucking loser. Uh-huh. So maybe they'll go, just make him uh, whatever you are. You know, they, they can change it for you. Well, I appreciate it. This is all very nice and positive uh, COVID test, but I don't know. I just I, I got to keep the the hopes low, just because I it's gonna crush me when three months go by and I go, hey, whatever happened to that? My manager goes, ah, oh, yeah, they threw your tape on a pile of uh, burning Bibles, so go kill yourself. Well, keep the hopes low. I would say not even the hope. They hope is fear in reverse. As they say. I mean, it's the same as fear. It's just kind of, you did it. It was fun. And by the way, now you're in the Rolodex. They're seeing you. Somebody involved with Curb is watching you. So that's something. And, you know, Schumer was on there and uh, Eric Andre and the other guy. So Santino. Yes, yeah, Santino. So I think you got Sonny from Goodfellas. I mean, Godfather. Ah. Um, I just realized I was referencing Goodfellas earlier. I thought it was Godfather. Something clicked in my head. It's two different movies. I hate myself. Well, Kazale. Hey, there you go. That's what it was. I got a lot of things fishing around my tits. A lot of Italians in that head of yours. But anyways, I got I got my fingers crossed. And by the way, I mean, we'd just have to, you'd have to take your own life after that. If you go to fucking L.A. or <laughs> oh. New York, wherever they're shooting, and you're on set one-on-one -on -one with Larry David, I'm going to come in your ass, pull it out, eat your ass till there's cum and shit in my throat, and then I'm going to kill myself <laughs> and, and take you with me. Because that's, it I mean, you can't top it. It's the ultimate. I mean, Jerry would call. I'd go, hey, I don't have time for you, you fat fucking Jew. I'm, I'm talking to the king over here. We're talking to the real talent, you piece of shit. But <laughs> I mean, I would rather get a role on Curb where I'm talking with Larry than sell my own TV show. Literally, if somebody was like, Come you on. can sell a show, have your own show, or be on Curb dancing with Larry, I'll, I'll take the Larry. I don't need a show. That seems like too much work. Yeah, that's a good point. And here, here's the, the other clinker is... I told my manager, I was like, tell him I've met him before at, at a wedding. Tell him I opened for Jerry. Like, I'm in that world, baby. I'm a New York comic. Uh, I, and then I thought, maybe he'd hate that. Like, oh, this guy opens for Jerry. He's going to want to talk to me. He's going to want to talk about Jerry. He thinks he's got an in with me. So, like, hire the stranger. I don't want to hire a guy I've met and know and worked with Jerry. That's tricky. Let's see. This is interesting. So, thought experiment. If you had a show and it was a big hit and, you know, you got your house in Brooklyn and then someone calls and says, hey, I got a kid auditioning. He's obsessed with Mark, loves Mark, never misses a Tuesdays. He opens for Joe List. Would yeah. you like that or would you not like it? Because you might go, hey, if, he, if Joe likes him. That's the question. Yeah, that's a great point. Now, what, what would you do if it was flipped? It opens for Mark. He's a uh, Tuesday. He's a fan of, of uh, your, your YouTube special and blah, blah, blah. Well, the honest answer is, if it was it if it was a situation where I was going to go on a trip with this person, if I was going to go do a weekend of comedy with them and spend four days in a car, and they were like, "He's friends with Mark," I'd go, "Oh, great! That's perfect. If he's friends with Mark, then that's I'm sure he's fine. Let's go." But a role is different because you're like, "Well, I'm not spending time with him." I'd be like, "Just give me the tape. I don't give a fuck if he's friends with Jerry." Ah. But I wouldn't be mad. I wouldn't be upset. They said he's friends okay. with Mark. But I would be like, oh, he's friends with Mark. Okay, great. But what's his audition? I don't give a right. shit. Is he black? Is he brown? Is he smart? Is he funny? Is his dick huge? Does he swallow? Right. That makes sense. I hear you loud and clear. All right. Well, those, 
those are just my thoughts. But again, it's hard. To, we don't know because I've never had a successful show, let alone two. Yeah, it's out. It's out in the ether. We'll see what happens. I hope he thinks it's funny. I mean, I'm sure he's got seven thousand tapes to look through. But my agent swears to me that, trust me, they thought about you, or this is perfect for you, or we we curate this so this one goes to you. I, I don't know. They they claim that that there's a shot because I keep going. I don't want to do these auditions. I'm lazy. I'll never get it. And they go. We put in a good word. We have a good vibe. We have a connection with this person. They trust us. So I don't know. We'll see. Let me just say this as a friend. If Please. you get this gig, yeah, I don't want to hear about it from someone's tweet or seeing you on the show. I want to, after you dance around and kiss and fuck your wife, maybe you call your mother. Maybe. Eh. I want an early text. You I don't want to see this on fucking Salacuse's Instagram <laughs> or, or fuck, I'm watching the show and all of a sudden you pop on. I want to text bold letters, all caps. I got the part with like some kind of emoji or gif or whatever it is. Oh, are you kidding? If I get this, I'm getting a Larry in a headlock. I'm kissing that top of that big bald cue ball and I'm sending it right to you. What could be better? I don't think there's any topic. Like we've done all the late nights. You have a comedy yeah. special. I guess selling your own show is crazy, but to me, you sell a show, it's it's Cancel City. I mean, they're just going to come after and go, hey, these guys talk about fucking kids every three minutes. Sure, and it's a ton, a ton of work. I mean, they always say the best part of a selling a show is selling it and then just going to fucking Tahiti for six months, but actually sitting down, writing it, coming up with an episode every week, dialogue, all that shit, that's a nightmare. Well, it's kind of like the boat thing we talked about last yes. week. Like, you, you want a friend that has a show. I want you to sell a show, and then I come on and, and, and you know blow you a couple times. Totally. And that's it. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to do any work. I mean, that's why we love Larry, because he gets that. He's like, oh, I, I made the best show of all time, but I also was miserable because I was stressed out about writing it. That's how I feel. Right. Yeah, it's interesting. I was listening to uh, somebody, some fan, I, and I appreciate them, <clears throat> sent me a, a podcast with John Krakauer, who's my favorite writer, and he was on the podcast. So thanks to the Tuesdays that really listen and know what we love. But anyways, I listened to it, and he said, he's like, I'm never writing a book again. He's like, I, I, I would never for a second. He's like, I'm, I'm 63 years old. He's like, I want to live. I don't want to sit because he's OCD. He's like, I rewrite every sentence 100 times. And he's like, I don't want to be sitting in my basement in my 60s writing wow. a fucking book. I, I want to go rock climb and have sex with children or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. But I get it. It's almost like with a show, you want to get a show earlier. Cause yeah. you're like, after a while you're like, ah, I don't have the energy for that. That's why podcasts are nice. We get together, we blow each other for an hour and then you go do stand up. Here, here, queer, queer. I'm with you. Yeah. Boy, that guy sounds just like you. Who, who is this guy? John Krakow. He wrote into the wild and oh, uh, my right, favorite right. book, which what do you think of this? You know me, I like to go a little cuckoo and, and we're, there's not a lot of traveling. There's some traveling. I got some big trips coming up. But, you know, you don't have as many social stuff. And there's all this excitement. So I love Crack Hour. He wrote Missoula, which I remember talking about a couple of years ago on yes. the pod. And, and, um, and Under the Banner of Heaven, which is about Mormons. And then he wrote the Patrick Tillman story, where, where men find glory. All great stuff, which a Tuesday gave to me in Denver. So thank you, sir, if you're still listening. Ooh. But anyways, he's fantastic. He's a rock climber. He's a writer. And um, so Into the Wild is my favorite book ever. You might remember years ago, I went to Peru to see my ex-girlfriend. Yes. We had a great time, the whole thing. And she was like, I'd like to read that book. I lent her my copy and, of course, never got it back. We don't talk anymore. So now she just has it. So I don't yeah. have it on the shelf. And I have all of his books in sequential order, except for the first one, which is my favorite, so I said, I'm going to just rebuy it. I'll just buy yeah. it again so I can have it on the shelf like a trophy. But then what do you think of this? I got a little uh, hair up my tits. Please. I thought, if I'm buying it, why don't I buy a nice version? And, you know, I got the first edition Dharma Bums, which is a, a hefty, expensive book. I said, I'll get a first edition Into the Wild. Okay. Now, what does that mean, first edition? I'm an idiot. Get school me on this. Does that just mean one of the first ones ever made? Yeah, so it's the first it's the literally the first edition. Since then you know, they sell out of those ones and then they make it a movie so they put the movie cover on the book. So right. now it's you know, you know, Emil Hirsch is on the cover and it says now a hit movie. Right. And then it keeps selling out so you gotta keep remaking books. 
And then yeah. he does a revised edition. Now there's a new forward or prologue or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, so, like, if you want to go buy a Kerouac book, you're not buying one that came out in 1957. You're buying one that was, they made three years ago. Got it. Okay. So the first edition's exciting. So then I look it up, first editions, and they're all like 500 bucks, 400 bucks. I'm like, why is it so expensive? It's only 25 years old. It's signed by Krakauer. So I went ahead. I spent 450 bucks on a book I've read. Is that stupid? Am I crazy? Am I gay? Ah, well, you're a sentimental soft douche. You know that's part of it. You're, you're a softy, and this shit means a lot to you. So I get it. And it's a signed book that it, I assume it can only go up in Val. So you're you're kind of making an investment here. It's something, and it looks nice on the shelf. I, he held it in his hands. He wrote in it. I bet it's weird though because he's not like a rock star. He's just a rock climbing writer. So it's not like he touched it. But it's yeah. something, and I said, "Ah, oh, fuck it." I'm, but I'm afterwards. I'm like, "What are you doing?" I could have <laughs> I mean, got it for nine bucks. It's a big purchase, but it is signed, and you like the guy, you respect the guy, and he, he's a, your favorite writer. So I get it. I get. It. I mean, it's it's a pretty penny, but I, I think it's all right. I mean, I wouldn't do that every every week, but <laughs> once a year, you're okay. Yeah, I guess it's a story, but uh, I, I don't know. I feel like some of the twos gays are going to write to me and be like, I lost my job, you piece of shit. You're buying $400 <laughs> books. But it felt well. exciting, and, um, you know, so I got it, and now it's on the way. But you got that little high. It's like a drug. I'm waiting for yeah. the doorbell to ring, and I got a nice first edition book with an autograph in there. Yeah, when Louie comes by, you hope the first thing he does is go, hey, what is that, a signed crack hour? That's pretty good. Yeah. What, what? You what know. I would have done is saw that it was 400 clams, said, hold uh, hold your horses there, Cracky. Let me check <laughs> eBay, and then I bet you could have found a, a $150 sign. Well, thing. that's what this was. This was Abe's Books, which is some uh, kind of book thing. I don't know what Abe's Books means. That's what Abe's. came up. But they were all uh, around there. Some of them were like 1000 bucks. so I don't know if they were inscribed or, or what the fuck. Yeah, well, I mean, that's a lot of, a lot of coin on a, on a paperback. <laughs> um, but anyways, I got that coming in the mail. I'm excited. I forget why I brought it up. But oh, just the idea of that he was like, uh, I don't want to write a book. I just want to hang out. And that's how I feel sometimes. <laughs> that's so hilarious. I'm like, I might move to Brooklyn. I might own. You're like, what are you, crazy? That's a horrible decision. Then you're like, I just spent six grand on a, on a fucking coloring book here. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just guessing. I don't know anything about real estate. I don't have a real estate guy, but something tells me this Brooklyn home with a sauna and a fucking wet willy or wet slide, slippery slyly is a little more than 400 bucks. Well, of course it is, but it's a steal. It's a steal and a half. Uh, so that's the only reason I'm considering it because you're getting all this shit. I looked it up. That in Tribeca would be like, you know, six million, literally. And then I looked it up in Brooklyn. And it's quite quite less i'm not gonna say the price but quite less tribeca that's the name of the girl that took my into the wild oh yeah ah, it's becca <laughs> Oof, that was a real bomb no no sorry it took me a second i forgot her name that uh, was becca anyways all right i'm out of stuff to talk about i got a crack hour book i'm very excited my father's right. gay let me let me do this last ad and then i got a i got a saga here oh right i forgot we got another uh what do you call it? Sponsor. Oh, I oh. love this sponsor. Love these guys. You going? I'm going. I thought you said you said you were going. I'll go. All Tuesdays, right. I don't, I don't mind my, going. You my go. bottom's cut off. Folks, we love these folks. Tuesdays with Stories is also sponsored by <clears throat> Manscaped. Valentine's Day is right around the corner. That's right. Just a few weeks away. It's February 14th for all you uh, dum-dums. Manscaped has got a special thing going on right now. Get yourself some Manscaped. You're going to love it. My lady loves this stuff. It's good to uh, shave whatever your sensitive parts are. They got all kinds of great stuff. The centerpiece is the Lawn Mower 3.0. It's a trimmer. It is the best trimmer around. I use it. She uses it. You can get it for her. She'll be thrilled. It's waterproof. It includes an LED light, and it's made with advanced skin-safe technology. That's a lot of fancy stuff. It basically just means it won't nick or snag your nutsack or pussy lips. When you order the performance package from Manscaped, you not only get the lawnmower, you also get the crop preserver, an anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer. It's getting hot outside, and this will keep... You know how hot it's getting. It's, uh, this will keep your balls from sticking. 
and the crop reviver, which will keep your balls from smelling. It will keep them smelling fresh. This is the worst copy I've ever read in my life. I should use this thing on my fucking central artery and kill myself. Get the prop mop ball wipes to freshen up in a pinch. Mark, you better take over. I'm fucking having a conniption fit over here. All right. I love Manscaped. I got a big, fat, hairy bird's nest of a mane on top of my shaft, and these guys come in with that crop preserver, and I, I, I get no razor burn, no bumps, no dots, because this stuff, it's deodorizing, it's moisturizing, it's great stuff, and just they, they snip and snap, and it's so easy and clean. I love Manscaped stuff. They got the best trimming devices uh, big fan. I keep it in my suitcase. I rarely charge it. They last forever. It's good for a snip and a snap anytime you need it. Get 20% off and free shipping when you use the code TUESDAYS at manscaped.com. That's manscaped.com and use the promo code TUESDAYS, plural, like your balls, for 20% off your first order. This Valentine's Day, take it all off, folks, your pubes, and snip around. Make it look bigger. Trim those hedges, folks. Do her a favor. Go ahead. Snoop around. <laughs> Fiber. <laughs> All right. You ready for this nugget? And I'll, I'll try to I'll try to cliffs note it because uh, we got a couple minutes left here. I think I'm ready. I'm excited. Yeah. And please chime. And I'm. You know I value your opinion. And I want I want you know, the whole thing here. All right. I'll throw it on your back. Thank you. It's warm. All right. So. I got this BMW in a in a uh, you know the bucket of bolts. They call it Old Smoky at the garage because every time they have to move it, it's like blah, 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 poo. A big shoot of black smoke comes out of the exhaust pipe, and it's a little it's a little insulting that they call it Old Smoky. But hey, it's fun. I like having a real couple of New York mooks, you know, working in the garage. I got the jumpsuit on, a splotch of tar right here, a soot, and they got a big wrench. That they they're, they're scary men. But that sounds great to me. It's fun. It's fun. It's a very classic New York moment. But so I had this, I got this Beamer and I, I vetted like six mechanics. All these Tuesdays hit me up. Hey, I got a shop in Queens. I got a shop in Long Island. I got a shop in Jersey. I'm the guy. I can fix that thing up ship shape. I can put some new fog lights on it, exhaust, help caps, whatever you want. And I, you know, I Google, I ask around, I read some of the reviews. A lot of these guys are shady characters. You know, some people are like, I heard you're thinking about going with uh, Rob's, uh, Rob's Auto Johnson in, in, in Nassau County. Don't do it. That guy fucked my wife and raped my kids and all this. Like, okay, great, good to know. So I got, a, I was doing a lot of back and forth, a lot of research, a lot of homework on these auto shops. Okay. So one guy I really liked a lot. And he just clicked, and he's like a Tuesday, a Seinfeld douche, the whole thing. And he came out to a Soul Joel gig I did, and we met, we had some beers, we broke bread, we kissed, and great guy. And I said, this is the guy, I can feel it. Loves comedy, loves all of us. So then he sends me a video of him at the shop. He's got a couple 2002s, which is my car. He's got a couple at the shop already. So not only is this guy a gearhead and a cool cat, but he's also got the exact car I have, and he knows what he's doing. Okay, so far, so good. So far. So I go, okay, how far out are you? He's in Pennington, New Jersey, which I've never heard of. It's some small weirdo Amish town. It's an hour and f hour and a half, hour and 40 away. Okay. Now, I said, I get nervous even just driving this thing around the city. It could get nicked, scratched, touched, breathed on wrong. A pigeon could shit on it. Or shit on it. And an hour and 40 minutes in this little uh, tin can, could it even make it? Right. And I don't have plates, I don't have insurance, and it's not registered. So we got a lot of factors here. I got to change states in this death mobile in order to get to old Pennington. Right. It's like you have to buy a car to tow that car. <laughs> I know. So so I'm nervous about it. It's been looming, looming over my head. Like I'm just sitting here paying $8 million for a garage. This thing's rotting away when it could be being worked on. What's the point? You should get it over there, man. Stop wasting time. We're in a pandemic. You never had more time. This is it. So I go, this Thanksgiving, I'm pulling out of the garage. I'm packing a snack and a water bottle, and I'm driving out there. That's it. So I wake up early. I suit up. I get my little lunch pail. I put on a hat, and I go over there, and I go, can I pull out old Smokey? And they go, oh, boy. You're not going to like this. 
So uh, they, they swing open the big door. Flat tire. I'm talking to oh. the rim. They're like, if we even bring this out, it'll scrape. And, like, it'll ruin your rim. This is a 50-year-old rim. You don't want to do that. Uh, you should call a tow truck and tow it out there. And I go, all right. So it kind of ruined my mojo a little bit because I had this big mission planned where I was going to go out there and have an excursion and, and go through the tunnel in my little car and make it and all that shit. So I call the tow truck. It's going to be like $8,000 to tow it from here to there. But they go, hey, if you get AAA, you get a free tow if you sign up. So I go, all right, well, let me do that. So I sign up. It's a nightmare or whatever. And then I go off on a gig to, I don't know where, some some gig, Florida maybe, Tampa. And then I go, hey, can you tow my car? They go, you have to be there. And I go, ah, jeez. So I go, can I send the lady? And they go, no, we can't send the lady because she sucks and all this shit. We need your ID and all that. I'm like, all right. So now I come back. Now Christmas comes. You go to New Orleans. You go to Boston, whatever. So finally the new year is here. And I say, how about this? I'm going to go to that garage get the car out, fill it up with air, take it to a mechanic, have him change it, and then drive it. Okay, that sounds like something. Yes, but I, I will say that the towing is so tempting because you don't have to do any work. It's a, it's it's alluring. Yes, yeah, so but, wait, can I ask, though, what? why is it impossible or so hard to just crank it up and change the tire yourself? Am I naive? Am I gay? What's going on here? That's not bad. That's not bad, but I don't have a tire. Ah, so you get the tire issue. Yes, yes, sick and tire. So there happens to be, so I call Salacuse and this other guy, Eric, and he, he, he's going to film it. So he comes with his camera. We meet at the place at noon. We, we fill the tire up at the garage. They were nice enough to have like the little, <laughs> we fill it up. We get some temporary air in there. There's a big screw coming out of the tire the size of my dick. Punctured a hole. I don't know when it happened. We take it to the auto shop. And it's classic New York. I go in, there's a bunch of guys in jumpsuits working, and I go, hey, sorry to bother you. It's a big warehouse on Greenwich Street. Hey, uh, change the flat. The guy goes, I'm eating here. I go, Jesus. All right, sorry. He's eating a sandwich. I, apparently, we hit him at lunch. And he oh, goes, I'll geez. be with you. I'll be with you. Give me 15 minutes. I'm eating here. I go, all right. So I wait outside. We're just sitting there like idiots and looking at the tire. And this Hispanic guy comes out, not a lick of English. And he goes, tire, tire. I go, yeah, yeah, flat flat tire screw and he goes hmm feels around finds a screw this is how good this guy is he goes plug it i plug it and i go well i'm driving an hour and a half on the highway i don't know if a plug's gonna do it he's like highway fine fine plug and i go all right i give the guy a 10 bucks he, he plugs it right there so did did he fill it and plug it or just plug i don't understand how it works i'm an idiot you gotta explain this to me like i'm a retarded kid on a christmas I agree. I didn't know anything either. I, this plug makes me nervous because it just sounds very temporary. We'll plug it. He he puts this goo in, then <laughs> yanks it out, and it when you yank it, it plugs the hole. Well, that I've done. <laughs> yeah. And then he fills it, and I'm like, are you sure this is good? He's like, better than new. Good to go. He, it's all Spanish. I don't know what the hell he's saying. And I made He's like, it's flat, flat. I said, my ex. And he goes, ah... Uh, and I go, all right, whatever. So then we have to drive it through the tunnel. Now, the tunnel is very governmenty. You know, there's there's cops waiting there with machine guns. There's a toll booth. There's, there's all cameras. kinds of stuff with the tunnel. So it's very risky. So I get Salacuse. He's got his van. He follows me close to cover my no plates. Okay, that's a nice move. Good well, move This guy is Sally. a very valuable friend. He's like uh. Luco Brasi. He's the best. He's the best. And he's, he's, he's furious the whole time. He's like, how long is this going to take? And I told him it's going to be about an hour and a half. He's like, geez, I got kids. I got a wife. I have a life. What are you doing to me? I said, hold on. We'll get there. So we go to the tunnel. And I got to tell you, man, it is nerve wracking. That car is little. Everybody's whizzing by in these big trucks. You know, I'm like, oh, God. You know, no power steering. The thing's rickety. It's made of tin. It's from 73. And... I've never gotten that thing past second gear because I'm just tooling around the city. You got to go. You got to get in the flow of traffic. I got that thing up to 78. I mean, fourth gear. Oh, my God. That thing drives like a dream. It's so well taken care of. He's on my ass. We get through the tunnel. We go through the toll booth, and we're home free, baby. Salacuse raises the question, how much gas is in that thing? Oh, boy. Because 
my my speedometer needle and my gas needle needle and my heat is all it's all just doing this. It's like fucking Muhammad Ali, it's just wiggling everywhere. And I don't know how fast I'm going. I don't know how much gas I have. I don't know how much uh, tachometer is all over the place. It's it's pretty risky. So I go. We better get gas. So we go get gas. We go to Jersey. They have to fill it up. It's a whole thing. Now we're full tank. And we're back on the road, and this is the longest ride of my life. It's an hour and a half white-knuckling it in this fucking car. You don't know if it's going to pop. You don't know if the tire is going to blow. Woo! It was scary. Just counting the minutes. And this guy's, Eric's filming the whole thing. And, uh, whew, we finally made it. We get to Pennington. We pull up. The guy's got Porsches, Lamborghinis, Jaguar, uh, Lotus, you name it. Just out in the lot. It's a beautiful place. And this is the cool part. So this guy comes out. He goes, hey, it looks pretty good. He checks it out. What do you want? He brings out a clipboard. I go, I want new shocks. I want new uh, alternator, whatever the hell it is. I made up a bunch of stuff. And he goes, all right, well, we got to wait for old man Charlie. And I go, who's old man Charlie? He's like, "He, what's that? I said, OMC. Yes. Uh, He comes up. He owns the place. He's like a car savant. You know, he's building cars. He knew Henry Ford. He fucked his wife, this whole thing. And this guy's 900 years old. He's like a car whiz. So we're, we're taking photos with the car. He's looking at stuff, kicking the bumper. Old man Charlie pulls up with this rickety old truck. And he goes, is that it? And I go, yeah, no hello, no nothing. White hair, looks like Doc Brown. He's got Ooh. the black fingernails, the big boots. And he goes, huh. And he walks straight up to the car and gets on his hands and knees. And he's looking under it. He goes, dink, dink, dink. Hmm, not a lot of rust. Where's this car from, California? I go, it is. And he goes, yeah, I thought so. He goes, give me the keys. I throw him the keys, catches it, and he just takes off. That's it. He's gone. He just hightails it down the highway. All I just hear is, you know, then we start talking. What's his deal? Oh, man, how about those nets? Oh, geez, you see the capital? He comes back 20 minutes later. He goes, it runs great. Here's what you got to do to it. Goes through a whole list. We shake hands. He gets in his truck and leaves. So wait, he doesn't do the stuff? Someone else he, does the stuff? He might do it later, but they you know, they couldn't get to it that day. I didn't get there till uh, 4 p.m. I see. Oh, okay. I see. This guy was out of a movie, though. He was such a character. He's got overalls on. He's under the car. He's, he's listening to the car like a Native American. He's licking it, kissing it, sniffing it. And he just knew everything. He popped the hood. I mean, this guy was uh, he was unbelievable. So we shook hands. We we all left, and uh, Salakius was pissed. And we got home, and I took him out to an Italian dinner, and that was that. So the car is there. I love anyone that has that level of expertise. This is my problem in life. I want to be that guy, but I love so many things that I end up knowing <laughs> just a tiny, shitty amount about like fifty things. Right. Instead of being the one guy that's like, ah, you got to lift your wrist when you throw the ball. And I didn't see it. I heard it, you know, which is just, I'm just yes. talking about Kingpin now. But, uh, you know, I just, I love those guys that can look at a thing. My uncle's like that. My uncle Brian, he just sniffs. He's the one that put his ass on the window and, and offended the kids. But he's one of those guys, too. He can just look and, and knows the size and width of a car and how the headlights work and all that shit. So kudos yeah. to that guy. He sounds like the John Wayne of cars. Yeah, completely. He's like the wolf in Pulp Fiction. He shows up. He's like, this is what needs to be done. And then he left. No hello, no bye, no good afternoon, just gone. And it was really something to see. Like, you're right. It's that expert guy is so rare now. Everybody knows about Instagram and uh, Snapchat. How, here's how you get on TikTok. Here's how you get a million views. This guy's like, this how you, uh, This car's from California. What is it? A 73? Smells like it needs oil. Uh, one spark plug is out. He just had his ear to it. I mean, it was really, really something to see. And is he the Tuesday? No, no. The Tuesday is the guy who runs the shop. Okay, I don't want to say his I name, thought. but I was talking to him the whole time. Then Charlie, old man Charlie showed up and, and did his whole spiel. Wow, I love old man. Maybe we could convert old man Charlie. Tell the owner to work on Charlie. Have him play a couple episodes. Maybe he gets on board, and now I'm driving the bus. Yeah, it'd, it'd be nice. It'd be nice. We went into the auto shop. You know, there's one guy in a in a jumpsuit under a car. It's up on the rack, and he's doing this thing. And he, he goes, hey, Bill. Hey, Norman's here. And he goes, ah. And he gave me this weird thing. I was like, what's his deal? And he goes, oh, he's a fan. He's freaking out. I was like, oh, that's cool. He's a Tuesday, too. So it was a, it was a fun moment. We got out of there, we got back home, and then we did the curb audition, and uh, it was a great day, but I feel so much better knowing that the car is just being worked on. I get texts every day. Do you want this rim, or do you want that hubcap? Do you want this shock? Do you want these 
uh, whatever, shift gears, uh, you name it. So it's a good time. That's the thing with the car is doing any maintenance feels so good. I got an oil change on time. Felt yes. so good. You fill the tank with gas. You just feel like, hell yeah, I got, I got 400 miles to go on this thing. And yeah. uh, I needed air filters. And my dad's an amateur mechanic. He got right in there and changed the filter. And it was fantastic. You just feel like I'm taking care of it. I'm doing it. Because we're now, children. And imagine how you would feel if you did it. Like if you changed the air filter, if you changed the oil, if you re- re- replaced the drum brakes or whatever the hell it is. Yeah, that would be something, I guess. I, it's like when you make your own meal, but I've never got into that. I'd rather have you know a woman make it and then blow me. Same, same. Get those shoes off, get pregnant, and start cooking, skank. I'm you with you, but way. yeah, it's, it, it should be done by spring. So in springtime for Hitler, I'm going to go down and get it, bring it back, and uh, the guy's like, what do you want to do with it? I just said, I want it to be reliable. I don't care about speed. I just want it to be a nice car that I can get in and drive. That's great. That's exciting. That's something to look forward to. I mean, hopefully you got your nice house in Brooklyn, we'll see, and then you'll you'll be cruising around FDR and the West Side Highway and all that good shit, and then it's going to be a great summer. Hell yeah, and I'm going to pick your fat ass up, and we'll, uh, we'll watch our my curb set if I get on, and it's going to be a great year. I don't think it's called a set, but yeah, I'm ah. hoping... And uh, boy, we gotta we gotta wrap this son of a bitch up. But uh, I'm in Royersford next Ooh. Wednesday, January 27th, Royersford, and uh, <clears throat> that's gonna be fun. I'm excited about that. And then also uh, Key West, February 11th through the 13th, Comedy Key West. Come on down to that. Sarah will be there with me, and um, hell yeah, that's gonna be fun. And then March, I got some shit, but I don't have my calendar here, so. Fuck! I think oh, I think I'm at the new one, Kansas City Helium. I think in March. So is that right? I believe so. So hey. that's exciting. And uh, get on the Patreon. Bunch yes. of great shit on the Patreon. It's a great time to be on there. We got a whole slew of stuff, and there's new merch, tons of merch. Tpublic.com. Yes. Check out that Tuesdays merch, and um, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell a friend about the show. Keep spreading the word, and suck your own dick. Where are you gonna be? Yeah, we got a new Seinfeld commentary on uh, on the Patreon that's uh, creating quite a buzz. So if you haven't seen it yet, get on board and check that out. And we'll do more stuff like that. People seem to dig it. Uh, February 3rd, I'm at the Stress Factory in Jersey. That's an outdoor show. That's a hot room or hot tent. And then I'm at Soul Joel's in February 10th. This week I'm at OKC Comedy Club. And, uh, yeah, more fun stuff. Uh... What is that called? Good nights in Raleigh oh, on uh, on uh, you know February late uh, early March. Sorry. So yeah, a lot of fun stuff coming up. Tell a friend. Tuesday it up. YouTube. Share us on YouTube. Check out our specials. I ate myself out to lunch. Subscribe and uh, go gay. Fuck your mom and praise Allah. <laughs> <laughs>